Dr. Rachel, thank you so much for having me here at your practice, yes. Gatewell Counseling. Um, I, why don't you give us just a few minutes talking about what you do here and, and how you make a profound impact on people's lives. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm so glad you're here. This is, <laughs> this is a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, at Gatewell Counseling, uh, I see families and mm -hmm. help a lot of people um, in their course of recovery from substance abuse. Uh, we deal a lot with depression, anxiety. Recently, I've, I've seen more and more couples come in, mm -hmm. but usually under the guise of helping them with their kids and in parenting. But in then, addition to marital and premarital <laughs> counseling? It kind of all rolls together, everything. yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So uh, cool. that's been a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, um, again, it's just so awesome to be here in Dallas yeah, and to, view, to visit your beautiful facility here. Thank you. It's a blessing. Um, but I want to get into our next topic, mm -hmm. which is the discussion of the phlegmatic. Yeah. And that is a temperament that is very familiar to you because you are one, right? Right, right. In control. <laughs> In yes. control you uh -huh. are. Yeah. And um, you also have a lot of familiarity with it because of family members who are phlegmatic mm -hmm. and also clients mm -hmm. in your practice. Mm -hmm. um, specifically, let's talk about the inclusion area, which is service relationships and thought, you know, mm -hmm. thought processes, our thinking. Mm -hmm. You know, um, what are some of those characteristics that are typical of a phlegmatic in inclusion? Yeah, so Phlegmatics tend to be the most even-tempered of all of the temperaments. Mm -hmm. And last time we talked about how the, the phlegmatic contribution in a blend uh, helps water down whatever that temperament is. So right. if they are very strong-willed, they might be less strong-willed. If they're very high-strung, they might be less high-strung mm -hmm. because of that phlegmatic blend. So when you have a phlegmatic in inclusion, just the way that they think, but a pure phlegmatic, some of the, and I have my notes here, uh, just to make sure I don't miss anything, mm -hmm. they tend to be very witty, have a real dry sense of humor, um, and that's how they approach life in general, but it's also how they keep people at bay, not because they don't want to be around people, but because they, they're they actually conserving energy. They don't want to be way. drained. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when you start hearing that wry sense of humor, it's a little bit of a sign of back off baby. And that's specifically regarding the phlegmatic and inclusion, right? Or does that principle still apply to the other two areas of the, temperament? The other two areas also. Okay. But yes. Uh, this so if is, you're a phlegmatic, purely a phlegmatic, not a blending, mm -hmm. but purely a phlegmatic in inclusion, control, or affection, you keep people at a distance most of the time, right? Through through humor. Through yeah. humor, yeah. sarcasm, joking. Yeah, it's not all the time, but when mm -hmm. you start hearing that, that's actually the little indicator to others that the phlegmatic's kind of done with that conversation. Sure, sure. But they tend to be very flexible, well-rounded, uh, despite uh, not needing to interact all that much. Mm -hmm. uh, they're very willing to interact and they, they function very well socially. They can function in both very hostile environments and ones that are not hostile. So they, they tend to be the flagpole in the wind that can withstand anything, either mm -hmm. a sunny day or a hurricane. They're still standing. Well, that's a great benefit to have <laughs> mm -hmm. those kinds of people in your yeah, life, right? Yeah. Or to be that kind of a person. Right, right. Because there's yes. so much volatility in the other temperaments. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, yeah. what else? Like what other characteristics? Like what, what are the high marks or the, the highlights of mm -hmm. being a phlegmatic in inclusion in particular? So they're very task oriented, meaning they would prefer to do a job versus fix problems between people or, or interact with mm. people all day long. They would yes. much rather have a task in front of them to do. They uh, they have a great capacity. Well, that's for work. very similar to the melancholy and in inclusion then, mm -hmm. right? So they they have yeah. some some closeness there. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. I would say that the phlegmatic and in inclusion can tolerate and and doesn't mind interacting with people as mm -hmm. it, they don't try to keep people at bay as much as a melancholy might. Okay. If that makes so sense. So they're, they're more rounded, they're a well-rounded temperament. Mm -hmm. We can put it that way. Okay. 
They are, um, and they are very well suited for jobs that require precision and accuracy. They're very calm, easygoing, extremely efficient, and perfectionistic. Mm -hmm. Those are the strengths. <laughs> okay, so then you want someone with that kind of a temperament working in bookkeeping or data entry or processes and procedures of mm -hmm. some kind. Yeah. I would imagine that would be the ideal career. Absolutely. Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, let's move on to our, our next question. And, and you touched on this a little bit regarding um, the blendings. What makes a pure phlegmatic and inclusion so distinct, so different? What is so unique about them that you won't see, for example, in a supine phlegmatic or mm -hmm. a uh, phlegmatic melancholy? What makes them really stand out? Mm -hmm. They tend to be the observers. Okay. So they will not ever be attention seeking. Mm -hmm. They they tend to be very calm as i mentioned before but they're not trying to be calm some people are trying to always calm themselves down <laughs> they don't have to worry yeah. about that they're pretty much they're naturally chill calm. all the time <laughs> yeah but they sit back and observe things and they they're able to actually see things that other people don't and it mm. tends to fare along the lines of justice injustice so they mm -hmm. have a very high sense of justice themselves right. uh, but they tend to want to inspire others to do something about it if they detect an injustice they might raise awareness about it but they're not inclined to actually take action on that themselves they but they would it's more than just telling somebody of a problem it's they try to engage others in terms of peacemaking and, mm -hmm. and this is indicative of the phlegmatic you know across the board across uh, all the different categories because they 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 want peace at all costs and mm -hmm. not all temperaments want that or care right and <laughs> would you do. would you say also that 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 natural ability to be a peacemaker leads them to be empathic they're naturally mm -hmm. empathic towards others and so they they're able to practice empathy in their close relationships yes. or any relationships in yes. their lives. Yes, yes, they mm -hmm. do. They are uh, uniquely equipped to not only see but as as you say empathize with both sides mm -hmm. and it makes them wonderful arbitrators. All right, so moving on to our next question. Mm -hmm. Uh, why do phlegmatics typically come to counseling? And I want to throw out a hypothetical scenario there. Uh, a phlegmatic in inclusion married to a sanguine in inclusion. Can you okay. explain maybe the dynamics that are going on mm -hmm. and why, if the phlegmatic is instigating the counseling or seeking counsel, why would he or she be doing that? Well, surely you jest because a phlegmatic is rarely going to <laughs> initiate yeah. coming to counseling mm. mostly because they they don't want to change anything so it would usually be the sanguine in inclusion who's bringing them who to would counseling. who would at least be prompting mm -hmm. the the phlegmatics so okay. they end up in counseling because that the, I'm talking about the phlegmatics now they end up in counseling because other people in their lives are complaining about them mm -hmm. And it's not that they are bad people or are doing anything wrong per se. It's just that they're very true to their temperament. And mm -hmm. why fix it if it ain't broke? So they don't see that anything's wrong because mm -hmm. they are trying to conserve energy all the time. That's, they're really not self-protective. They're very empathic, as we mentioned before. They're lovely people but they are not going to exert themselves unless they have to. And, and so they'll go to appease the sanguine in inclusion. They will. Or whoever it is that's yes. them. Mm -hmm. Well, finally they will. They, so the sanguine will usually have their, their needs not being met in terms of attention, affection, mm -hmm. uh, you know, stimulation, you know, hey, let's go out to dinner as opposed to staying in for dinner every right. single night. You know, the phlegmatic is very routine <laughs> oriented. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the sanguine just needs variety. And so sure, if the sanguine is trying to please the phlegmatic, well, they're pretty much going to be on the phlegmatic schedule, which is going to be pretty boring to a sanguine. Mm -hmm. So the phlegmatic really needs to learn how to 
engage a little bit more with the sanguine partner, uh, do more things that the sanguine would like to do, and the sanguine's gonna have to learn how to chill out a little and get their need for variety and entertainment and just spontaneity in other places other than just the phlegmatic because they, that's really a lot of energy for the phlegmatic to expend. Right. So. What about in the case of parents who bring their uh, phlegmatic children, phlegmatic yeah. and inclusion children to <clears throat> counseling? Why is mm -hmm. that, um, you know, what, what are they looking to achieve when they bring them in most of the time? Well, I think a lot of them are concerned that their child is not involved in enough scholastically. So mm -hmm. they're not going to be the ones that are, we'll say, the joiners of different clubs at school. Now, they might if some of their friends say, hey, why don't you come do this? They, they will. They'll go along with it. But only if it's really easy, only if it fits in their schedule, if mm -hmm. they don't have to these are not going to be your track stars usually <laughs> you right, know? Right. not the jock <laughs> well they could be but they're mm -hmm. it has to be easy enough for them so mm -hmm. everything is about conserving energy and so the the phlegmatic is just going to take the easiest path and so then the parents are trying to enlist a counselor as a motivator for their children Yes. is usually what happens. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, very much so. It's really helpful for everyone, but it's really helpful for parents in particular to understand, to get educated about this temperament and understand mm -hmm. that they're not lazy, that they're not trying to infuriate other people around them by mm -hmm. not doing certain things and, and by lacking initiative. Uh, that they they really are the peacemakers. Highlighting the, the strengths of a phlegmatic and inclusion is very helpful for parents usually. Mm -hmm. And then for the child, you know, just understanding if they have been called lazy or if they have been labeled, you know, a certain way and they've kind of fallen into that 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 funk of not doing anything having them step up a little bit and saying, okay, you know, how about you engage 15 minutes a day with your family? And, mm -hmm. you know, it's not too much to actually initiate a conversation at the dinner table. Or so then there is hope for the phlegmatic hope. child. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, and, that's awesome. and allowing other people into their world, which is really about loving others, uh, but they're just not going to be super involved about it. Sure. But sure. they can look they can look unloving sometimes. Not not hostile but unloving. In, in some of my uh, instances or some of the clients that I've seen in my practice, the teenage boys who are phlegmatics and in inclusion typically They're all gaming. They either game a lot or yeah. they listen to music all the time mm -hmm. and they go in their room, lay in the bed with the lights off, mm -hmm. just leave me alone. And they need that time. They mm -hmm. do to regenerate because the, the phlegmatics really need to uh, regenerate with sleep. And mm -hmm. so it, they're just going to sleep more than right. other temperaments. They just are. And that, that's yeah. how God made them. It's, it's okay. I wanted to bring up an example from pop culture. And this is a lot of our viewers out there are going to remember Star Trek, the original yeah. one. Uh -huh. You have Spock who said the needs of the many out ne outweigh the needs of the few or the one. Mm -hmm. And then he's got his uh, counterpart, Captain Kirk, mm -hmm. who is the classic choleric. Mm -hmm. And there's this dynamic going, going back and forth. Uh, you know, describe for me how that really uh, manifests, how you see that between the phlegmatic and the choleric in inclusion. Let's say they're both, mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about both of them in the inclusion area. Yeah. Um, what does that look like in your practice when you have those two? Well, so the, the Spock character, the, the phlegmatic, is very accommodating mm -hmm. to others around them. So yes. in particular, a choleric is going to be uh, trying to establish, I'll just say domination. It sounds so harsh, and it, that is the harshest form of it, but mm -hmm. that's the end result. So a right. choleric kind of ramps up, right, sees how far they can go sure. with 
the phlegmatic, but phlegmatics, even though they can take on a lot, they are they are the lighthouse. They are that you know the flagpole. Like I said before, they can mm -hmm. handle anything, including the choleric, and they the the phlegmatic ticks off the choleric a lot because mm -hmm. the phlegmatic can be so stubborn and can use their their wit and humor to just irritate the the choleric to no end mm -hmm. and so then the choleric just learns that they can't they, they cannot ever dominate or have control over the phlegmatic it's kind of a beautiful thing to see you know because <laughs> it's as long almost as you're like, not a choleric it's beautiful <laughs> well it's kind of good for the cholerics to meet their match yeah they need they need to be put in their place sometimes yeah it is but and it's really interesting but it's a balance it's a balance it's a balance and it's it's fascinating how distinct that is from the melancholy and choleric combination yeah because with the melancholy you have someone who has a high a propensity for being offended mm -hmm. when they're trying to be controlled by the choleric but the phlegmatic is like a stone like oh, mm -hmm. I don't care you that's know? right yeah they just <laughs> won't move mm -hmm. and their no means yeah. no right so as you know a phlegmatic in control is a very witty person mm -hmm. very sarcastic at times mm -hmm. they have a wry or dry sense of humor um, and that can be uh, that could result in a sharp tongue Mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah. people can be offended by that. And can you describe for us some instances or maybe an example of how that has caused serious problems for a phlegmatic in control? And what would you advise a phlegmatic in control about watching their tongue? Yeah, they, they can get their, themselves in trouble with mm -hmm. their tongue for sure. And a lot of times what they are just trying to do, again, is conserve energy with their sarcasm, but they can really end up hurting other people. And as empathetic as they are, they can also just kind of choose to not engage internally. So it's almost like they, they're there understanding other people, but at the same time, they don't care because they care. They do care, but they care more about their energy reserve. Mm -hmm. So they're only willing to engage to a certain extent. And when they start feeling like their energy is going out, that's when they get sarcastic and mm -hmm. witty and at the expense of others. But they're never trying to actually hurt another person. That's the thing. That's what other people it's a defense mechanism it's a defense mechanism mm -hmm. and and they are really trying just to self-preserve okay as you know phlegmatics in control have a tendency to blame themselves when they can't uh, convince someone to do better in their lives mm -hmm. so how would you talk to a phlegmatic in control or what would you say to help them with that problem and we know that they're so emotionally invested in others how would you help them to temper that a little bit yeah, so the phlegmatic in control has a tendency to be very self-righteous, mm -hmm. meaning they think they're right all the time mm -hmm. about what they see. Because remember, they, they do observe. Right. Uh, they, they tend to see things that, that others don't, but what they observe, they are assuming that their take on it is also the correct one. Right. And so when they are invested in other people's lives, they're assuming that they can help as only they can. So they're really, they will listen to other people's ideas, but their idea is right. So mm -hmm. why use that? So. But then there is a, there's a potential for self-blame also when other people don't do what they suggest. Right, but what I mean is that they are, they are trying so hard to actually convey what they know to be right mm -hmm. that if the other person doesn't take it that's what they then take back on themselves inwardly mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. as oh i didn't do a good enough job and they are so perfectionistic that they'll kind of play in their mind different ways to angle it to try right. to inspire others to motivation because again they're not going to do anything about it 
They, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're hoping the other person will change their ways because the phlegmatic is just not going to do that. So they're in a counseling setting, either because they were brought there or because they, for some reason, decided to come in and yeah. receive counsel. How would you help them to change that dynamic inside of themselves? Uh, I think the awareness, they are open enough to understanding just the awareness of the self-righteousness can be limiting. Mm -hmm. So just for them to even hear something like that, they are willing to say, oh, okay, well then maybe I can account for this other opinion and, and work it into what I think too. And mm -hmm. there are lots of ways to look at a painting, right? So lots of different angles. Sure. Uh, why do phlegmatics in control typically procrastinate? And I say that because there's so many instances where we've seen this in our in our practices where they're proca they just don't want to. And there's other temperaments that are like that too, especially the melancholy, mm -hmm. but even supine for different reasons mm -hmm. than the phlegmatic or the melancholy. But in the case of the phlegmatic, how would you counsel that person to be timely? and dedicated with their commitments or their projects that they're expected to complete? This is a hard one. Uh, they are never going to be the work ahead kind of people. They are not going to be the ones to, on a Sunday afternoon, do what is due on Tuesday. They're, they're just not. Mm -hmm. um, part of it is they have other things that they are working on right okay. now but the other part is that they're so slow paced and it takes so much energy for them to complete a task they're they're extremely efficient with their time because they know their energy levels it's, it's almost if you're familiar with pokemon and the def different energy cards you know <laughs> yeah. they're, they're just hoping that they get an energy card that they <laughs> right. can, you know get a little boost there right. but um yeah, unless they have that, they are constantly guarding that, that energy reserve. And so if something is due on Monday and they know they have two hours before it's actually due, they, they'll start it two hours before and that's just, that's just mm -hmm. how they are. Unless it means something to another person, could you please have this done early? And then they're able to back it up. But unless it is imperative that it's done by a certain time, so if it's important to somebody else, the fire will be lit under them to do it. That's motivating enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. But is. for themselves, they don't take the initiative. That's interesting. Yeah, they just won't. So it's it's a very um, naturally selfless temperament then, mm -hmm. uh, in, in that respect at least. Yeah, they mm -hmm. can learn how to be more self-sacrificing when they are trying to actually get along and reciprocate with a partner or if, if uh, a work situation, uh, working on a team, they can learn how to be more self-sacrificing, but it all boils down to that energy reserve. Right. Uh, but they wanna do a good job and, and they want to, they are great working well with others and a lot of times that saves a lot of time and, and effort too because they're able to actually bring people together that, that normally wouldn't unless they were yes. there. That's an so. awesome tool. Mm -hmm. Um, regarding the stubbornness of the phlegmatic in control, they tend to be very self-destructive if they're caught into that, that pattern of behavior or habit mm. that results in that. So yeah, okay. why is it so hard to get them to change when they're involved in a behavior that's morally wrong? Uh, Five minutes. They, they do think that they are always right. Uh, they are very resistant to change. And they have a level of uninvolvedness with life, meaning whatever the status quo is for them, whether it's good or bad, it morally good or bad, destructive or life-giving, whatever that known pattern is, is what they tend to just maintain. Because again, energy-wise, it takes energy to change. And so they have to be convinced that a different way is going to bring them more peace or is going to make their life easier. That's the motivation for change. Mm, so that's the key. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Let's move on to the phlegmatic infection now. Mm -hmm. What are some of the typical characteristics that you've seen in phlegmatics and infection, both the strengths and the weaknesses? Strengths and weaknesses. Well, the strengths would be they are very well balanced, easygoing, mm -hmm. non demanding, calm, having realistic demands for love and affection, which is so nice for all the other temperaments because they, they are very realistic. They're not needy. They're not needy. They, they want to know what the, the partner needs and they're just mm -hmm. willing to give that. Uh, weaknesses is that they can be unwilling to become involved in general. Mm -hmm. So if, for instance, a, a supine partner isn't speaking up as to what they need, the phlegmatic's just going to lay around. I mean, they're fine. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to have the, the phlegmatic in affection doesn't have many needs to be met. Right. So uh, it's really up to their partner to articulate what they need because the phlegmatic is kind of good to roll with whatever is there. Sure. Uh, they, they have a tendency to be observers only mm -hmm. unless... Rather than involved mm -hmm. in the relationship. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, they're rarely self-sacrificing, again, unless they have a motivation to be different. Um, unemotional, unexpressive, which can be really confusing to other people around them. They get misread a lot. Uh, sometimes they're misread as being cold or indifferent, mm -hmm. which is not at all the case. It's just that they are so unflappable that uh, other people may be freaking out or super exuberant about something. And the phlegmatic <laughs> is pretty monotone. They might have a little smile or you might hear a yay. But there's just there's there's not a lot of emoting. Um, but they they still have a lot of feelings. Uh, their verbal defenses are used to protect their low energy supply, and mm -hmm. uh, that's true for um, both physical and sexual involvement with their mm -hmm. partners. So in the case where a spouse is married to a phlegmatic in affection and is not getting the kind of reaction that they expect to expressions of love and mm. care. Mm. Um, how would you advise that spouse? Well, I guess you would first start off by explaining that mm -hmm. a lot of these things are innate in their spouse. Mm -hmm. But then how would you turn it to the other, the other side of the coin and say, well, this is how you need to step up or this, these are some changes that you need to, to, to make to the phlegmatic, yes, you mean? Yes, to the phlegmatic. Yeah, so the, yeah, the phlegmatic just needs to know what needs are there. And, mm -hmm. and then the expectation would be that they could step up a little bit. Mm -hmm. They're never going to step up a lot. So mm -hmm. if, if their need is, uh, let's say, at the neutral position and their partner has a, a really high need, their partner is actually going to need to find ways to fulfill that need in, in other areas that are good. Mm -hmm. But the phlegmatic can learn how to step up a little bit, but they're just never going to be able to match it. Okay, so one more question, Dr. Rachel. A lot of times a, a certain response is expected by a phlegmatic in affection, and they just don't appear to be involved emotionally when they should be. For example, mm -hmm. Uh, a phlegmatic and affection who's attending a funeral mm -hmm. is expected to cry, but doesn't really have a natural uh, ability to express themselves that way. Mm -hmm. How would you advise, because we don't want there to be falseness of faking of mm -hmm. tears or whatever kind of emotional, that's an example, but there could be positive emotions, you know, more laughing, more spot, more, more jovial type mm -hmm. of behavior or mm -hmm. demeanor. How would you advise them to deal with that when people are really getting repulsed with how emotionally uninvolved they are? Mm -hmm. So they, they do want to be engaged socially, uh, which is, that's a good thing. So as opposed to uh, the, the melancholy and affection that would prefer to be the wallflower, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at least the phlegmatics in the mix, but they their natural state is going to be to be as you said non-expressive probably not talking just you know wrapping their arm around another person right. you know not even saying anything but to 
teach them how to actually express what they're feeling. I'm sad too, or this is such a loss, that, that kind of thing, just to articulate something, just in, in a mannerism or some way to convey to other people what they're feeling on the inside. Their feelings don't have a, a huge range. And so the, the sanguine swings all the way up here and then all the way here. And the, the phlegmatic is, is just up and down a little bit. Right. So they're just very even tempered. But to people that live around them and, and love them, a lot of times they can feel, their, their family members can feel unloved by the phlegmatic just because the phlegmatic doesn't naturally express what they're feeling. They'll receive it, mm -hmm. but they don't naturally seek it out to give it. So they, right. they have to learn how to actually express love and affection and attention to other people. So it's an intellectual more. decision. It's, uh, they do have uh, to decide that. It's an action in their mind that they have to take, even mm -hmm. though this isn't naturally coming out, I'm going yeah. to do it. And yeah. that's not fake? Well, it's like anything. If, if we are living with other people that we love, we want to love and serve them the way that they feel loved. And mm -hmm. so we just have to make the decision. Right. Okay, they it's wanted me needs. to sit beside them, you know, mm -hmm. on the couch to watch a movie. That may not be how the phlegmatic is in affection is wired. They mm -hmm. may prefer to sit by themselves, but if it means a lot to the spouse, then go sit beside them. And they're genuinely happy to do that. Yes. Um, but they have to be told, they have to learn. Right. Okay, well, we're gonna wrap it up right okay. there. Dr. Rachel, thank you so much for doing this interview? Yes, pleasure.